What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of La Liga Career Mode. This is episode number 46 and we're starting today's episode off by officially ending season 3 with Granada. Our best finish of the save. Third place in La Liga. Of course we were in the title race until the very final few games where we failed to win any of our last four to finish in third and slip below Barcelona as well. But I wasn't too concerned about that. At the end of the day, the chance of us pipping Real Madrid to their third straight title was going to be very difficult indeed and very unlikely. Champions League was all we wanted. Champions League is what we've got. And so for season four, our budget with Granada in the big time is £83.5 million. Pounds. With wage budget alteration, it all depends on, well, first of all, the amount of players we sign, but also the type of contracts we'll be given out. We could possibly squeeze it up to around 84 to 82, uh, sorry, £85 million, pounds, or we might have to reduce the deficit and go down to around 82.5 million pounds. So yeah, it's it's around 82 to 85 million pounds, somewhere around that range. So it's our biggest budget of the save, but of course, what comes with a big budget? I always say it, big objectives. Um, did not expect to see this. Yeah, win the league title. Okay, after last season, I'm going for it once again. We were in a title race for the vast majority of the campaign, only to bottle our hat in the ring in the final few games. Happy to admit it, I absolutely choked it, failing to win any of our four final games. Copa del Rey, uh, I mean, you know, I'm just glad the board, the board, no, the board, no, I can't compete in the cup, hence why did you say, oh, if you can get us the quarterfinal, we'll be happy, yeah, thank you, board, you know I can't do anything in the cup, but also for the Champions League, I mean, you know, like, we're on the cusp of being a five-star team, so I understand the objective, but for our first year in the big time, Reached the final, really? I mean, okay, I was I was going to say semi-finals this year. Because, again, with the team we've got, as I run you through it here, it's good, man. I mean, the first 11 is really strong. We, we've got some superstars here. Maximiano between the sticks. VR the one, the kid I'm sure this year will be 85 or 86 overall come the end of the season. And, of course, Luis Javier Suarez, our main man in the prime of his career. 86 overall, third straight year as our top scorer. There's no doubt about it. Like we've, we've got the quality to go very far in the Champions League and be in a title race too. But to reach the final in Season 1, that's pressure. That is a lot to ask of our first year in Europe's big competition. So... As we would start the season off here, uh, you take a look at our squad. A few of our key players have deals that come at the end of the year, and of course they were all going to get contracts. Uh, Luis Maximiano, who has just grown so well since the start of the save, where, let's be honest, he was a little bit of a liability to begin with, but that's the power of persistence. He's now become one of the best goalkeepers in Europe, 85 overall. Uh, I did give Montu a new contract. I like him as a squad midfielder, and of course now Rashina is retired. He'll be our sort of fourth choice CM, if you will. Darwin is now 31 years old. Old, but the guy never lets me down when he's fit and healthy. Of course, season two missed the entire year through the ACL, so I am going to give him extension and keep him here. And of course, Carlos Neva as well, one of our season one OGs. He's now 83 overall at 28 years old in the prime of his career right now. Centellas is a great backup left back and an understudy, but Neva will always be my third choice. Not sure about Ricard. I'll think about that as the window goes by. But four players, uh, sorry, three players on the transfer list. Barthia is the most noteworthy one, but for the most part, I'm keeping my core here if we are going to hit those objectives of winning the league title and reaching the final champions league i've got to keep the band together i can't blow the squad up no i need to keep my star players here but for new signings with granada biggest budget to save so far over 80 million pounds well, we all know the weakest area of our game. It's the defense, which is ironic because we've actually got a really highly rated back line. But you know we can't defend. Last year, we had the worst defensive record in the entire top four. We conceded 51 goals. This year, I know it sounds silly, but my aim is to get it below 50 goals conceded for the season. If we're going to do that, I think we need a new long-term successor for David Garcia, who is now in his 30s. I want someone in the prime of his career and someone no, I could say could be competing at a higher level. And I thought this guy was the perfect option for me. Currently at Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa after moving on from the Emirates Stadium. But at 86 overall in the prime of his career right now, he deserves to be playing Champions League football. It's Gabriel, the Brazilian centre-half. And, you know, to be honest here, 
I just feel I've got to do this, man. I've got to spend my entire budget on a player that would be a star in his role in our weakest area. The guy that fits the bill is absolutely perfect. It is indeed Gabriel. And there were a couple of other names on the shortlist there you saw that I was considering as I ran you through their stats. My main three targets were Saliba, now into Milan, Hermoso, now at Juve, and this guy, Gabriel. But whilst this series isn't all about realism, I thought if we were going to do it mostly realistically for this transfer window, I think Gabriel would make the most sense because, you know, at Inter and Juve, right now they'll be playing Champions League football Saliba and Hermoso but with Aston Villa um, Gabriel 86 overall in a prime of his career you'd think he should be playing European football of some sort and with his rating in a prime of his career Champions League as well. It just seems to make more realistic sense, if that makes sense. When we look at his stats here, 91 strength, 94 heading. He's six foot three, 92 reactions as well. We can see a lot of a lot of goals from balls into the box. So I think that's going to really help. And also as well, he's not a terrible passer of the ball when distributing from our back line. And with him being left footed as well, that's really key because obviously in our team, both Garcia and Duarte are right footed players. So to have an LCB and someone that is a left footed player naturally as well, I think can help when playing out from the back. Last season, of course, you would have seen we could see quite a few goals and trying to pass out from the back, especially those embarrassing ones uh, against Getafe and also in the first leg of our Europa League exit to Roma as well. So because of that, what I've decided to do is put Catania on the transfer list. And we did get a bid for Garcia as well. And if I had a little bit more money remaining, I wouldn't have minded it accepting that one there, selling him and Catania and trying to bring in Hermoso, who's moved on from Atletico to Juve as well, because I knew we were going to get a bit for Catania as soon as I put him on a transfer list. He won't play a game in this team now that Garcia's dropped to third choice because Jerome is just as good as a fourth choice. So Catania, I thought I might as well sell and get some cash. We ended up getting 13.5 mil from Stad Reim in the end, but because the Gabriel deal cost us 72.5 mil, I wouldn't have enough to sign both him and Hermoso, even if I sold Catania and also Garcia as well. But as you'll see after this, I, I thought this was really harsh. Turned down a bit from Dortmund for Neva, turned down a bit from Sevilla for Atechi, and then the board scheduled a performance review meeting. And I was like, what? They talked about recent results. Lads, we're a week into a new season. It's the summer transfer window. What do you mean results? Pre-season friendlies? Come on. Get out of here, man. That's ridiculous. And it's it's things like that, right? I hope EA do work on it for the future. He's turned down this massive bid from Gerard here. They're going to turn defense into attack. They invested the money that we uh, gave them for Gabriel, for Suarez. Of course, we said no. But yeah, like seriously, come on, man. Why why would why would I be getting threatened with the sack? What, they don't like my choice of signing? Lads, you gave me the money. It's mine to do with what I please. I chose Gabriel. You don't want him? Well, I do. Typical, right? But I don't know what on earth that was about. But even so, we turned out a bit for Darwin. Just signed an extension, so it wouldn't be realistic. And also another massive bid for Suarez. Same fee uh, from Thomas Tuchel as it was for Steven Gerrard there. Turned them both down. Of course, he's going absolutely nowhere. Is this the year? where he finally wins the golden boot at the fourth time of asking. I guess we'll see. But we are going to loan out our youth goalkeeper, uh, Nacho Cruz, uh, who we gave a pro deal to in the last season. Uh, he shows the great potential tag, but he's not going to get a game in this team behind Maximiano and uh, Roman. Luis, right on cue, wanted by Benfica. We turn this bid down here um, for our Portuguese shot stopper. He plays every single game, man. Even our cup games, he still starts. So Maximiano's going nowhere, of course. And that means that any backup goalkeeper in this team is is going to be just that and as we know goalkeepers don't tend to get injured or suspended in career mode so no point in um, in keeping a reserve goalkeeper if he needs game time which Cruz does we've gone out on loads to Belgium we'll see how he gets on there and also with Nico Williams from Bergamo uh, Bergamo from Atalanta from Bergamo which of course we turned down but after making just a one signing I thought well if we are in the Champions League this year and we are asked to compete on multiple fronts this season win a league title to win our first piece of silverware of the save and reach the CL final as well we might need a little bit more depth and I thought this guy would be a great option yep former Roma player released in the summer Carlos Perez released by Jose Mourinho and we're going to pick him up 26 years old in the prime of his career and 78 rated as well you might notice that in this save and in my last save with the Saints as well I, I, I'm not really exploiting the free agents pool as much as I 
did do so in my earlier career modes this year, and it's just because there's just an abundance of talent available. You would have seen on my shortlist Cesar Asper, the quota available. Okay, that's not too unrealistic because he's now in his mid-30s and not as high rated as he would have been in his prime. But there are some incredible wonder kids in the save right now that are in the free agents pool. You'll, you'll know it. Like, you'll see as Carl's pair of signs here for us on a free agent. Very happy with that there. Certainly a player that can play through the middle and out on the wing as well. You'll know if you play FIFA career mode now. After, like, three seasons, there's, like, three or four incredible new gen slash regens that are like high 70 low 80 overall and teenage talents there's a couple of amazing center R's who we could have signed instead of gabriel and kept our cash there's an amazing um portuguese forward as well that's available i assume the regen of cristiano ronaldo but um i'm not going to sign those players just because again it is a little bit unrealistic and also it's a little bit too easy as well i'm really loving the challenge of this year's fifa i said before this is the reason why this is my favorite fifa in years because i do find it much harder so I'm not using those exploits now. Um, I don't mind one or two here and there that could be considered a little bit realistic, like Paris getting released, for example. That, to me, seems totally fine. As for the quota would have been as well, coming back to his native Spain, but a little bit too old for me now, I'd say, at 34. I'm okay uh, with my current crop of CBs. But, yeah, for the most part, it's the reason why you might notice that there are some class, young, new gen, regen free agents available, but I'm deciding not to sign them. It's an exploit, which I think would make the game a little bit too easy for me. Even so, as we turn down a couple more bids here, we had a bid for Azuni. Uh, Barfio's release clause was met. Fine, letting him go to Sampdoria. Um, he's got no place in his team now, of course. But also Azuni. Loyal Azuni, like he's been with us since the very beginning of the save. In season two, he was the second highest assist maker in La Liga, stepping in for Darwin after his ACL. But now that Perez is in, and I am considering signing another winger, because Darwin is 31 and I want someone to replace the Venezuelan long term, Azuni the Albanian, now approaching 30, He's not going to get any better, and I thought it was best to cash in with two years left on his deal. So he's off to Wolfsburg for, I think it was 13 mil. Kind of sad about that, because Azuni was always a great squad player for us, but he's now gone. That raises our budget a little bit more, as with the sale of Barthia as well, plus Catania too. And that means we still have a little bit more money remaining, as this is our current team with just a week to go before the new season starts. Not much change. Gabriel coming to the starting 11. Other than that, very little change to this team whatsoever with Perez joining our squad. We're still a four and a half star team for now. We're on the cusp of becoming a five star team though. And we to go before the season starts. As you'll see, there is just over 30 mil to play with. And we could still make a big deal before the window comes to its close. But that will end today's episode of La Liga Carima, guys. Big thank you for watching the season open. If you have enjoyed it, then please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of La Liga Carima, featuring the first games of the new season very soon.